Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Ray Gigant. This is another experienced dungeon crawler, which is a little bit strange considering we've just recently got Stranger of Sword City. However, this one isn't being published by NIS America, this is actually being published by fucking Actil. And despite what it says in the bottom right there, it is not being published by Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco is the publisher in Japan. Quite odd that they wouldn't decide to publish it here themselves, but then again, it is a Vita exclusive game. But then again, they are publishing Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme Versus Force here at some point, so who knows? Either way, we've got the typical set of options here from your experienced dungeon crawler, so let's just go and load into my game immediately. I've been told that the limit, or at least the relatively close limit for the first, um, for the first impressions people is two hours, so... I guess this game's good enough, and when we get roughly out of that safe zone, I'll go load my f my first save file there, which is on the first boss, so we can have a close look at what a real gigant fight looks like. Anyway, this is your home base. You can go to the classroom and the cafeteria for dialogue events, which aren't really that impressive. The game's got a Japanese dub only, but the writing is... It's good enough, like there's no obvious errors or anything in it from the first few hours, or first few hour and a half I should say, but nothing, there's no obvious mistakes or anything, so it's not that big of a deal. So we'll just go straight to the roof, which will let us go straight into the dungeon, which oddly enough looks exactly like the first dungeon. So I haven't searched much of this yet, I just went in and cleared all the tutorials out before I, or at least most of them out, before I decide to move on, so away we go. now. The odd thing about this game is that not only do they tell you... They tell you, like, as soon as you come into a dungeon, where all the enemies, all the items, and the goal is. Which is very strange. I don't know why they insist on doing this, but they've done it anyway. So, let's actually get into a fight, because we might as well, right? There's no random encounters, it's just... Yeah, you just have to fight these guys. But anyway, we've got several things to talk about here. First thing is that enemies have got classes and elements. These, uh, this cat lady here has the flame element, so they'll be weak against water, but strong against another element. I can't remember exactly what it is. The other two have no element, but this one's undead, so it's be, it'd be best to attack this thing with a spell. So let's start the attack. So we pick what, um, what monster we want to attack first. And then we can choose one of several commands to use. I've currently only got three commands bound because that's all they give you at the beginning, which is a little strange. I don't understand why they don't give you the full set of commands right away. But, oh well. So, the idea is we've got a limited amount of action points, as you can see up in the top left there. And you need to use your action points as effectively as possible, because if you don't have any, you won't be able to... You won't be able to use any attacks or any abilities, right? Not very good. So, not very good animations on the attacks and all that, which is a little disappointing. It's a shame, because the rest of the art actually looks really nice. Especially when you get into the big boss fights, where you're, when, when you're attacking the big bosses from like three different angles. It looks, it looks great, but again, there's just no real attack animations. It's just your typical experience sort of thing. Waiting replenishes your action points and everything else costs action points, so you know the drill. Okay, this lady is ground but flame, so if I attack her, it'll probably be the best thing to do. Uh, we'll attack her with both and we'll heal up because this is a this is a light encounter and light encounters cost half the action points. And action points are really the only thing that carries over between battles except for the super beat meter or whatever the bloody hell it is. I know they called it something, but yeah. As you can see, the animations are really quite slow to play out, so I recommend just holding X. It doesn't really matter what you do. So yeah, I got everybody healed up, and I got some action points left, so... I've, al I've also got Drive, which will put me into a weird mode, which name I can't remember, honestly, but... Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much, because you can get out of it any time anyway. It's a little bit disappointing, if anything, but, um... Yeah. Everybody else just wait. And get on the attack. And it's dead. That's... Yeah, that's pretty much it. 
You get an action point bonus for how quickly you finish the fight up and you get materials. How do we use those materials, you ask? The most boring part of the game, honestly. But anyway, this is your character stat screen. The only thing that matters here is their weight. And this changes throughout specific story events and story choices where the heavier you are, the more attack, defense, and HP you get. The lighter you are, the more hit, um, the more evade chance you get. But anyway, evade and hit chance, I think it is. So, if we go to tactics, we can set our different kinds of abilities. We can use snack bars, which will make our weight go up a bit faster. And we can use different items and spells and all that. It's pretty obvious and it works the same across all three of us. So, yeah. We can also use decoy. But yeah, we can't we can't set it to specific buttons. Some buttons can only have attack, some buttons can only have spells, some buttons can only have Some buttons can only have uh well the square button can have any ability you want, basically. So Yeah. It's weird because you can only take six abilities into any battle, which kind of disappoints me, honestly, because it's like, what's the point? There's a uh, it just seems weird because most dungeon crawlers are meant to be about diversifying your tactics and only being able to take six abilities in at once is a bit disappointing, honestly. Now here's the evolve screen. This is where things get as interesting as they're gonna get, basically. So you've got all your you've got three different trees. You've got the item tree on the left, the folk the community tree on the right, and the physical tree on the top. The physical tree is where you go to level up, basically. You apply one of your seed gems into that, and you will level up. And you've also reduced your pragmatism back to zero. So I'll just give these people a ability in each one of these, because why not, right? So now that's been done. You've got items over here as well. This is the way that the game handles loot. You level up your specific items on the side here. So, for example, if I level this up, I can now access level 5 bows. And then I can spend a Bree Gem, and I get a Attack 56 bow. That's it. That's literally the way you get items in this game. And there's no, like, actual equipping. As far as I'm aware, or at least there's really no point to actually... There is some point, I guess, to equipping items, but you get more powerful items 99% of the time anyway, through just grabbing different items here. So it's... I don't really see the point in it. It'd be much more exciting if there was an actual item system. And over here, you've basically got your different kinds of special attacks and special abilities. And it's not really that interesting. I assume this is going to get larger over time, because... This will be cleared out in a few dungeons, because the amount of resources you get is pretty high, so... Yeah, that's not really that interesting of a character progression system at all, because it removes loot from the game entirely. You end up not having that many abilities to go into battle with every time, just because you don't have the... No, I don't want to escape from battle, because you have to give up all your AP to do that, which is infuriating, honestly. But yeah, it's just, it's an honestly really disappointing system. Because, even better, you don't even have any HP healing items for outside of battle. Because every time you exit a battle, full health. It feels like, and the game is slowing down a lot here. What's going on? Um, the game just doesn't feel that complex, honestly. It feels like a dungeon crawling game for casuals. Which is a really weird... What's the word I'm looking for? It's a really weird, um... What's the word? Uh, comparison to, um... No. Compared to... Stranger of Sword City, which was the most hardcore of dungeon crawlers you could probably get. This game is just so casual, it's just weirdly... Stop attacking my goddamn mage, please. Yeah, if you can take out all the enemies in like one turn, it's probably worth spending as much AP as possible to pull it off. Just because you'll get a ton of AP back in the process. And if you come to an item, you just get more of these materials. So, there's really no point to it. It's... And the game's kind of balancing against the idea of grinding as well, because you end up spending a lot of time just, um... 
more resource. It's probably the reverse crystal which will let me... Oh no, it's Ulta. Yep, lose all your skills, but it gives you all your points back. So yeah, you can learn skills again. So it's just a respec gem, basically. That's pretty much all it is. So yeah, that's uh That's that's not very interesting either. It just I don't see the point, honestly, once you've got a decent strategy going, but then again you might not get it the first time around, but still, it's just not that interesting, honestly. It gets worse, like one of, like, that little meter up in the top right there that's counting up, that's the beat meter. Uh, these are undead, so I guess I'll have to just... I'll just guard, evade, and we will cast Shine on them, because why not, right? Yay. And I get my action points back. Yeah, that meter up in the top right there, when that gets to 50 or 100, you can do what is basically a massive attack that outpowers everything else you have in the game at this point. And... It is literally a rhythm game. Like, I'm not even kidding. You have to press the button on the time... Yeah, as long as we play it safe. That was always something they did in the dungeon crawlers. It was just... There'd be an enemy on the other side of the door, and you'd have to walk on the other side of the door in order to actually encounter them and know they were there. This time you know they're there, so it's not like it's a big problem. It's... It's just weird. Like, they casualized it so hard. I don't understand why they did that. You've got very little moves to work with, but it doesn't really matter because the enemies aren't that hard to deal with anyway. The, the elemental balancing isn't that big of a deal either. It's... It's very obvious what you need to attack with what. They don't- they just spell it out for you. You don't have to do any effort to make use of it. I- I'm pretty sure there are hidden areas. I mean, like, you can scan like this. And yes, the game is running this slow normally. I don't understand why it is. It was working fine on the first dungeon. Oh, well, I've got- I've got full AP. I guess I can go do this- this encounter, because the red encounters take double AP on your normal moves, and the blue ones take half. So, yeah, this is a flame, so I guess I can just attack normally and just get the rest of them to wait. I'll be able to show off the super beat meter on um, the boss fight, so it's not going to be that big of a deal if I can't show it off now. And we'll get these two to wait. Not really doing that well against it, but I'll just, yeah, one more time. It's just not interesting. Like, I've been playing this for an hour and a half, and I have literally lost all interest. It's amazing how quickly I managed to make me lose interest. I usually don't lose interest in games that fast, especially dungeon crawlers, but everything in this game is just so simple that I just, I have zero care for it. Alright, so I only get 10 of my AP back, but I had everybody waiting, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And I barely got any materials for that, but then again, I can come through here and get a lot, so it's, I guess it's worth it! So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not interested at all, honestly. It's just dull. Really dull. That's all I've got to say about it. It's just, sure, there is stuff here to keep you on your toes, and it's not like you can win every fight just by going into every battle and mashing circle, but, again, I'm just not interested. They, it, it's just so simple, even for a dungeon crawler. I mean, I know I was having problems with Stranger of Sword City, but... Then again, I absolutely loved Demon Gaze, so... Yeah, I, I just... I don't understand why they felt the need to make this as simple as it is. I'll just shine the hell out of them, I guess. There we go. Probably need to give the Archer Girl a bit more defense so that a decoy move is actually useful, but... Yeah. There is some strategy to be done, but... Again, just... Interest gone. I... <laughs> I've... I just... I don't care. I really don't. The game hasn't done a very good job of making me care, and I don't think a few more hours is gonna work, because... I've seen practically everything the game has to offer at this point. I read through the manual, which had basically everything, and... There's just... There's really nothing to it, honestly. Oh, 
or just wait. You can repeat the same attacks that you were using previously, but I don't do that. Not the best idea. There we go. But there's no persistence. I don't really feel like I've gotten anywhere. It's just... I don't feel like... I don't get the same sort of satisfaction I get from getting good loot from using the gem system or the level ups or anything like that. It just... Yeah, I've lost all interest entirely, and I'm going to keep saying that because it's the truth. I'm just... I'm... Wait, no, no, that's not right. Uh, back, 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 back. Uh, do I have a frost spell I can use? Yes. You die now. Thank you! Even worse is that... You can evacuate from the dungeon immediately just by going to the map screen and hitting the evacuate button there. It's just... Whoops, I didn't mean to actually press X on that. No valid route available to exactly where I'm standing at the moment. Fantastic. I just... Can you tell that I'm bored? Like, the game... The game's alright. Like, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's just... You've got all your, like, manuals and stuff you can use here as well. And it just... Yeah, it... Slash beat mode and parasitism and that just made my that just made my catch kid crash. Let's get out of that. Um Yeah. I'll go with show off a uh, gigant battle or gigant or however they want to pronounce it after this fight. It's just What do you want me to say? Fire. Let's go on. There we go. Will they even, like, give us new characters later on or anything like that to make things a little more interesting? I mean, we've got a ranger, a mage, and a warrior, so it's like, why would we need anybody else? But, yeah, I, I've been talking to um someone else who's been playing this game, and he said he's on one of the final dungeons already, and there's still no thought he needs to put into it, so I don't really know what to think. It just seems... It really is a dungeon crawler for the absolute casuals, for people who couldn't even figure out demon gaze. It's... Just strange how minimalistic it is for a dungeon crawler. Everything's there and it works. I'm just I'm not interested at all. I'll skip the pre-battle dialogue. It's it's a little long, but yeah, everything works. It's just boring. I I, I would have got a couple more dungeons in, but. After seeing the second dungeon was literally a visual copy-paste from the first, I just- I gave up. I was so bored already, I just gave up with the limited tactics and the limited level up trees and no loot and no persistence between battles except for this bloody thing that just showed up and... It's not even gonna be in this boss fight because it's not in the boss fight. And I'm gonna have to show you the slash beat mode because the slash beat mode is arguably the most ridiculous thing in this entire game. I just... Yeah. There's no skip button or auto button for these cutscenes, by the way. I'm literally just holding down circle. Because there's nothing else I can do. Just waiting for it to actually deploy me into the battle. There it is. Deadly encounters have something. I think it's that you get higher AP back if you get attacked. Which is fairly useful. So yeah, here's what the gigant battles look like from different angles. The art in this game is gorgeous, which is a shame there's no actual, like, attack animations. Except for the slash beat mode, which you're about to see. Just skipping the tutorials and all that, because... Alright, here we go. Same deal, except I only have one set of attacks to go with. Imagine going through the first dungeon with only one set of attacks to go with. It's insane, honestly. But anyway... My slash speed at the moment is at 99, so I'm gonna do a, a couple of attacks. And then guard. Just in order to, um... Get my slash speed up to 100. As you can see, she's gone and lost half her health already, which is not good, so... Now we activate slash speed mode, and this is where the game gets ridiculous. I mean, this is typical Japanese anime. It is that literally anime that's about to pop up here. So, yeah. Throw your blade up in the air. Literally impale yourself with it. Which lets the beast take control. 
literally a rhythm game in a dungeon crawler. And you actually have to do well at this, because if you don't, you do less damage for your super attack. And at this point, you've never heard this music, and they expect you to get it right, except they piss around with your expectations, because you... The things come in to the circles at different speeds, depending on the beat of the song. They'll be the same distance, but they'll come in at separate speeds, so you'll have no idea if you have to press a bunch of times rapidly, unless you've actually played the song before. It's retarded! It, it's the exact opposite of what games like Hatsune Miku and IAVT do. I always miss that bit at the end, because I always forget it gets really fast. And I have actually failed this to the point where it cost me to, it caused me to lose the fight. Because I just, I didn't do enough damage and I wasn't able to keep myself alive long enough to do another one. And yes, this takes about as long as it looks. So yeah, I've taken out half its health and now I'm going to have to do the rest of the fight with half its health because I wasn't good at a fucking rhythm mini game in a dungeon crawler. Oh man, I I can't stand it. I, I can't stand Ray Gigant. It's so boring. Some of the design decisions make no sense. It's the most lightweight sort of game I've ever played in my... F lightweight dungeon crawler game that I've played in my entire life. And I'm bored shitless. Just... What does that tell ya? What does that tell ya? Get murder evade get him to wait as well, because I'm going to need to get some AP back for this. Alright, so, this is okay. Let's go on the attack again. Um, we'll get her to evade for the time being, and we'll heal and wait. What? No. Um, no we'll, we'll get it away, because we are healing here, so go. Uh, everything's okay. I think I'll just um, I'll repeat the same no, it prompts you if you want to escape, but you can't escape. Despite the fact you can't escape with the tactics there. So, okay, so repeat, repeat all the previous commands. I imagine that a lot of the game is going to come down to this, just repeating the same commands once you've got a decent plan going. She's pretty badly hurt, but considering I'm not actually using her at the moment anyway, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't even matter, because, like... Even if she goes down, you still get the same resources you get at the end of the battle anyway, so it's not like there's any reason to keep your characters alive for like an XP boost or something. I'm talking really fast right now, I'm so sorry. You, there's no reason to keep them alive because you get all the resource gems at the end anyway. So it's like, as long as you don't lose all three and get a game over, by the way, no saving inside dungeons, but it's not like it matters anyway, because you can literally evacuate from anywhere to anywhere and the monsters don't come back. So it's just, yeah, like, I don't understand why they would why they would compromise something that they do relatively well for seemingly no reason whatsoever. This could have been a really interesting concept, but just this, the streamlining and the dumbing down has made it a, such a boring game that I really can't be bothered to play it anymore. Well, she's dead. And he's dead. He's not. Let's do another SBM, because why the fuck not, right? Here we go again. If you feel the need... To put a rhythm game in your dungeon crawler. Can I have what you're smoking? Please, I, I need something to take my mind off like the world and the state it's in at the moment. Because you clearly aren't right in the head, so... I... I'm amazed. Who came up with this idea? 
You are clearly off your face. Clearly. It's gonna be like one attack and it's gonna... Yep, one attack and it's dead. Fan fucking fantastic. It's amazing. It's like, I just went through all that effort and just poked it on the nose and it died. But yeah, that's it. That's, that's Ray Gigan in a nutshell. It's boring, it's ridiculous, and it's just... It makes no sense in comparison to Demon Gay, Stranger of Sword City, and Operation Abyss. Like, none. I don't understand why they would go for this sort of appeal, right? Like, I really don't get it at all. Why would they make something so simple when they're known for making, like, really niche dungeon crawlers? I'm not going to claim to know what the deal is at all. It's honestly ridiculous to me. I... I give up. I, I've given up. I just... Jesus almighty, like... God, they started out so strong with Demon Gaze, and then every game afterwards has just fallen off my personal radar completely. It's just so disappointing. Like, you look forward to playing a new dungeon crawler from the people who've made a good dungeon crawler, and it's a bad dungeon crawler, or it's a boring dungeon crawler, or it's a really hard dungeon crawler. It's just, they can't seem to get that balance right, in my, at least in my taste. Stranger of Swords is probably good if you're hardcore, but... Man... This has been Blue Maxima checking out Ray Guy Gant. Not worth it in my opinion. I hate to throw a, a till under the bus like this, but I don't like it at all and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I'd, I'd still recommend Demon Gaze over every other dungeon crawl there is on the Vita at this point. I'll see you all next time.